Welcome to Firearms Friday from the Wyoming State Museum here in Cheyenne. I'm Evan Green. I'm the firearms historian for the museum. And I've about finished going through the 300 and some firearms in the collection. So the staff asked me if I would be interested in moving on and looking at some of the edged weapons that we have in the collection. Swords, bayonets, knives, trench knives, etc. So I said sure, even though it's outside my wheelhouse, but it's a, been an opportunity for me to learn a lot about swords and bayonets. So I have a couple of interesting ones that I want to talk about a little bit today. This one is a saber bayonet or a sword bayonet that was uh, developed to be used on the 1841 Mississippi rifle. And we have actually have three of these in the collection, and they're kind of they're kind of neat with this brass ribbed handle, with the intention that uh, you could use it off the rifle if you needed to, or were so inclined for for close quarters, because once this thing is attached to the rifle, it's not really very effective in close quarter combat because it's so long and so awkward. This one attaches to the rifle. The muzzle goes through this hole here, and this latch in the groove on the back of the grip fits a boss under the barrel of the rifle. So the 1841 Mississippi rifle was one of the primary long guns used in the Civil War, and before that, in the Mexican War, American-Mexican War of 1847. So this bayonet may have seen service in either one of those conflicts, although it doesn't show much signs of use. I think it's interesting <clears throat> uh, that it has this uh, really full length, this is a fuller, this indented uh, section of the blade is called a fuller, and if you, if you uh, do some research, you'll see in some sources, well, it's a blood groove to let the blood out when you stab somebody. Or it's, uh, it's a, to let you pull it out of your uh, enemy after you've stuck him with it. Well, not really. It doesn't really serve either one of those functions. What it does is make the bayonet itself much lighter and stronger than it would be if it were just a flat piece of metal. Think of an I-beam, for example. <clears throat> which this replicates. So anyway, bayonet, this is a model of 1855 intended for use on the 1841 Mississippi rifle, which was a muzzle-loading percussion single-shot firearm. Pretty cool. I wouldn't want somebody after me with one of these. Okay, the next bayonet we're going to look at is a Rice Chillingsworth Trowel bayonet. Look at this thing. This was intended to be used on the 1873 trapdoor rifle, <clears throat> and it was it was developed experimentally. I think there were only about 5,000 of these made, and the idea was a multi-purpose implement that it would be a bayonet when attached to the muzzle of the rifle, but would be also useful as an entrenching tool. Well, as with many things that are allegedly dual purpose, this may not have been great in either application. This one is kind of unique because it has this wooden unit that goes into the socket so that you have a better grip if you want to use it for digging in. And I thought it was interesting as I did some research on this bayonet that <clears throat> on the, the uh, board, the military board that considered adopting this bayonet in 1873, one of the guys on that review board was Major Reno who was later, as you probably know, involved in the Battle of the Little Bighorn. And Reno was one of the people who voted to adopt, at least on a trial basis, this Rice Chillingsworth 
trowel bayonet. And I don't have any record that it was ever actually used in as a bayonet, but it was issued to, to infantry troops on a trial basis. So after the Battle of the Little Bighorn, Reno remarked in a letter to uh, another officer that he wished that he had had these at Reno Hill. He said, I could have saved more of my command if we could have had a more efficient, we could have had an efficient tool for entrenchment because his troops used their mess kits, spoons, and pocket knives and tin cups to try to dig in on Reno Hill. <clears throat> so again, just an interesting, interesting tidbit. This is this one is really nice condition. It has probably 100% of the blued finish on the socket. The walnut extension and grip is in very good condition, and absent a little bit of discoloration on this polished blade of the bayonet. Uh, again, really excellent condition. And kind of an interesting, interesting uh, experiment in bayonets. So, okay. Saber bayonet, trowel bayonet. If you have comments or questions about bayonets or edged weapons or firearms, you can put those uh, questions or comments in the section below, or you can always call the museum. I'm not here every day, but they will take a message, and if you want to talk about guns or bayonets or swords, I will return your call and we can chat. Thank you for watching.